Ryan Reeves was the center of attention today because of a hit he laid last night on Philip Peronik of the Detroit Red Wings. Now, was this hit dirty? The NHL didn't think it was worth suspending, at least as we learned today, but does it actually fit within the NHL's rules? Personally, I think so. That being said, I do not take concussions lightly in high school football. I used to do drills against a guy who had 100 pounds at me and would go on to play in the CFL. He used to beat me up, and when I played in games, I was definitely a bit of a headhunter, and I genuinely think that's part of the reason why I don't have a very good memory now. However, hockey is a violent sport, and while defenders do have an obligation not to take advantage of people, players also have the responsibility to take care of themselves. Let's look at the hit. This was not charging. Ryan Reeves wasn't skating as fast as he could. He could have destroyed Hironik here even worse than he did, but he glided into the hit. What did Hironik do? Well, pretty much everything hockey players aren't supposed to. He didn't protect himself. I mean, look at his head. He's crossing the blue line and he's not even looking in front of him. He's also smaller than Reeves and he's hunched over. What's Reeves supposed to do in this situation? Let's take a look at the rules. Hits to the head are governed by rule 48. Everyone talks about whether the head is the principal point of contact and while that's important, the rule is actually a lot more complex than that. It says specifically that a hit resulting in contact with an opponent's head where the head was the main point of contact will be illegal where it's not avoidable and it gives us three factors to help determine whether it was avoidable. Unfortunately, for Hironik in this situation, he pretty much checks all three, pun intended. For one, Reeves clearly hits him square on. He did everything right. It was an open ice hit. He didn't aim high or anything like that. Two, Hironik definitely put himself in a vulnerable position here. He made contact with his head pretty much unavoidable. Look how he's skating. He leans forward at the last second, and that's one of the reasons the hit is so catastrophic. Arguably, you can factor in the fact that he wasn't protecting himself by keeping his eyes forward into this part of the rule as well, but again, he also hits number three, whether the opponent materially changed the position of his body or head immediately prior to or simultaneously with the hit in a way that significantly contributed to the head contact. Again, he's leaning forward. He's not bracing himself. The contact with the head, if I were a referee, is pretty much unavoidable. Now, that's what the rule says. Whether you subjectively think it's dirty is up to you. Personally, I don't. I think it's a devastating hit, but I also don't think that the player tried to take advantage of a vulnerable opponent. This season, more than ever, we are seeing hockey move away from big hits and physicality to skill. Players skating over the blue line, the red line, crossing into the middle, heads down, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I think in 10 years, when players grow up with the game like it is now, it's going to be even more in that direction. But by its fundamental nature, hockey is still a violent sport. And I also think it's notable that Detroit didn't think this hit was dirty either. Now, part of that may be because they have Mo Sider on their roster, but anyway, let me know what you think down below. Was this dirty? Should the rule be changed or am I wrong? Did it actually violate the rules as they're written now? I look forward to reading all of your insightful comments below.